Very good afternoon. Good noon, actually, in uh, in Italy, right? No, yes. it's morning. It's morning. Um, yes, morning before twelve. Yes, you are still yes. in the morning zone. Very, yeah. very good morning to uh, you. And we shall still wait for few minutes to, uh, before I do the formal introduction of you to our Absolutely. students. But uh, meanwhile, can you I hear should... well? Pardon? Can you hear well my voice? I can hear you very well. Let one of the students say if they are hearing you well. Yes, ma'am. Fine. Yes, yes. Very good. Okay. Very good. So um, it's really good to see you after. I think it's nearly four and a half years we met, huh? Uh, here in no, India. Two years. It was 2018. 18 and um, I even 18 early 18 then. Early 18. Yeah, it was end of 18. Yeah. Oh, that's that's uh, then. I my memory is getting uh, very uh, <laughs> weak then, but it's uh, it's really really nice. But before all the students join you, I'll give you the feed. Uh, I mean, background of the students who are here because it's a digital course now um, in this uh, pandemic time. And I also got hold of one of your student now who was a trainee with you, is also joining you from Venice, um, <laughs> Ketan. So he was nice to join you. So um, this is a master's course on sustainable architecture um, um, with focus on heritage and community perspectives. And uh, we have 17 students on board in this course. And the students are all spatially located across India. So uh, because of the digital, they are having the course um, online so um, the kind of exercise they are doing is uh, basically um, taking a case of heritage and vernacular architecture from their region and by the end of the semester they are going to present a complete overview of that particular architecture of the region so that's their semester assignment so what i did um, in in uh, the due course is I'm trying to get people to talk about their region of regions architecture so that they learn how to present a case, you know, so that they are able to present the case. So they have chosen a case study of their choice. So I, there is no interference of the school and my interference in their selection. So now they have to present its heritage value its community value, its vernacular architectural styles, and with focus on material and technology and so on and so forth. So I'll um, stop here with the background of the course and I see students are almost here. So maybe I can do the formal uh, opening of the session if uh, you are okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and I'm really pleased to have my friend and also our common uh, guru, uh, Dr. B.V. Doshi's uh, disciples here. So I'm really, really honored that Giovanni Leone has agreed to actually uh, discuss with you about living architecture. And he has been not only architect, but also a very vocal person in terms of, you know, I will call it activist, but... Uh, I think critique is a better word for him um, when it comes to talking about architecture in general, as well as focusing on architecture of um, yeah, Venice itself. Um, but recently, he also uh, wrote a critique when IIM was brought uh, into, you know, at the fore of uh, bringing it down, some part of old IIM. So he wrote a, wrote a piece where he not only brought IIM, um, IIM's case as a, as a heritage, but he then also actually brought a string of uh, cases uh, in Indian architecture, contemporary architecture, which are heritage uh, spanning from, uh, you know, uh, I am to uh, even uh, set university campus alterations. So he's been an ardent critique, uh, not only of heritage architecture, but how heritage architecture is looked upon and whether it is a community who is wanting the heritage to exist or whether it is community who is actually uh, by not doing anything is letting it go. So he has written a wonderful piece on Venice itself. And it's it's a really good read to um, uh, read that, that campaign for a living Venice. And 
it it was a, it is really kind of a very a provocative write up if you read that and i think that that is something which we need to learn from architects who are somewhere at the convergence of you know doing architecture as well as doing activism so uh, he he does not write anywhere about himself as activist so he puts himself as critic so i'll keep it there and um, i'll then formally invite you to please lecture our students i'm sure they will learn from you and they'll reach out to you afterwards they have wonderful cases so if you are interested we can also share the case studies which they are they are doing pan india over to you jeevani and thank you very much again thank you to you i'll start this whole talking then i have a lot of images let's see how things comes out Yeah. So why leaving architecture? What is leaving architecture? Leaving architecture means an architecture that is alive, and at the same time, leaving architecture is the action of leaving it. So a leaving architecture is an architecture that is lived. Venice today is in a danger from this point of view. The decline started with the discovering of. America, new rules, new waterways that took it away from previous centrality of the Mediterranean area and the Middle East as a cornerstone and crossroad or of East and West. Today, the risk is that tourism and gentrification transform the town in its own appearance without life, a simulacrum. but we can still make venice be a workshop of the third millennium sort of lab of the present time let's think i like words i like root meanings what is present we have here a unique relation with time the most solid and stable time is the past is the past where everything remains the future is only possible and therefore uncertain but it is here and now that an instantaneous time is built in the present what is the present is difficult because we think of it and it's already gone it's away in the present we must live not for the present but in the present which has the past in light and the future in the future so the present is the time in between that connect time of transition of connection of change the risk here in venice is that what remains from this change is the beauty Let's go to me the quality of architecture is coming from the ancient Greek they had a term that was kalokagatia term that was the ideal of the education that was ethic and physic philosophical and gym gymnastic like yoga in a way so keeping together what is kalokagatia is kalos kai agathos kalos is beauty agathos is good so something that is beautiful but as is not good that is not functional is not even beautiful something that is good but is not beautiful is not even good so the two terms runs stays together this is something important because is is saying that for example humanistic and scientific approach has to stay together today there are scientific researcher are the pre nobel of the chemic in 1977 his name was ilya prigojin a russian or there is the philosopher um, and sociologist edgar moren that they speak about this new alliance of scientific and humanistic knowledge that is not only possible and desirable but is necessary today so let's start from the beginning what is architecture architecture back to the greeks is 
poetic and techne. Poetic aspect and technic aspect. It's humanistic and scientific. From the humanistic side, we have an aesthetic branch that is visual as the painting, as the composition, and then is also in the space as the sculpture. Then we have something different that we often don't look at. That is the poetry, literary aspect of architecture. That is narration and language. When you see architecture, we have an architectural text with its own language. The third aspect of humanistic side is semantic, the meaning of every sign in architecture. My father was an architect and my grandfather was an architect. He used to take me in the main street of my town and showing me the buildings. And it was like changing the leaf of a book, of a history of architecture, but of history of the community, a book of the history of the community. Because architecture and the urban space is the mirror of the community, of what we are able to do. The other side is the scientific. So it's something that has relation with mathematics. It's economic. Already Vitruvius knew that at the ancient time. Then it's technic and technological. That means constructive and material based on chemistries and physical laws. Then there is also statics, the abstraction of static. Because when we make a calculation of a building, we start uh, by neglecting that the building is static, is rigid. So we say the building is not rigid, is elastic, it has some movement. So from this abstraction, we go backwards and we calculate how to let it stay, let it be stable. That's why in our design, we have two phases. One is the composition, where there is more freedom. The other, was, other, other um, phase is the project. Project. Progetto in Latin is a preview. So it's already viewing as the construction will be. But the project is a process, never ending. It's not starting with the pencil is not ending with the construction because the project is a threshold. The start are the needs of the people and the end is the use of the building of architecture. It's like birth. Usually, usually we, you know, we put in opposite in opposition, life and death actually is wrong. We have birth and death that are two threshold, but life flows before the birth and after the death. So it's something absolutely different. So the birth is like the beginning. It's not the beginning. It's a threshold. It's, you know, one passing through one phase to another. Panta rei is an expression of the Heraclitus, old philosopher, that was saying that everything flows. Life is impermanence. And was based, based on the image and of the idea of water. He used to say, you cannot bathe, bath, twice in the same water, because the water is gone. But at the same time, the river is still there. So what is the river? What is the water? I won't talk now about the water because it's too much, but water is incredible because it's a substance that has the opposite in itself. It's a contain and a container, but no, that's take us too far. Let's think of the difference of space and place. What is the difference? 
is the use. A space is a room, is a geometrical entity. When we have some water and some fire and we cook, is the kitchen. So is the use that transform the space, the abstraction of the space in a place. Now, this is think of the practice of living. That is, in Venice, there is a unity in between environment and the human being, the human settlement. Here it comes the word habitat. What is habitat? Let's go back to the Latin again. Habitat is the third singular present person of the indicative of habitare, that means to habit, and therefore it means he lives. In this, there is both the action of living and the subject who performs it, who lives it. If we go back to the etymological root, we arrive at the Latin verb abeo, which is strictly to have in oneself, on oneself, with oneself. Therefore, in essence, having is also being. From here also come, comes a sweet dress, habito in Italian, an expression that represents more than just a dress. Being, in the broad sense, the way of behaving, therefore what we are, not what we have. The dress does not make the monk, we used to say. It's a way of saying, like, it's a common saying, like, that means, like, appearance are deceptive. It's like saying you can't judge a book from its cover. But in this case, the dress is the monk. It's like a skin. So the habitat is our skin. The Venetian lagoon, Venice and lagoon, are a unit is a miracle of an utopia that takes place. Utopia, it means you without topia, topos, that is place. So you topos is without place. Venice is topic, utopic. It's a utopia that takes place thanks to inhabitants, again. What is architecture? We have to make a dress. People have to wear have to habit our architecture. So we don't have to do what we like. We have to do what people need. Otherwise the dress will be long or short or they won't feel comfortable inside of it. And this is not good in architecture. <clears throat> Man makes, my, makes use of nature even when he wants to dig it here in Venice. Let's start with some images. Can I share my, my screen? Yes, sir. I'm sure you uh, should be able to. Let me just check. Please try, otherwise we'll uh, find out a way. I have to choose or you can do it? Um, I don't have your uh, presentation, so you can use the present now on the right side of your screen. Oh, present now. Perfect. Here we are. Can yeah. you see it? Uh, not yet. Me... <coughs> Shh. Oh, dog. I like it. <laughs> yeah. He's also participating or she's yeah, also hard. participating. <laughs> Wait. Why doesn't... Let's see. So you have to share the screen and uh, there's yeah. a blue button to share. Yeah, I made a blue button. I said share, but it doesn't share. It. I don't know why. So you have to select the particular window that you want to share. Do and you then, have uh, no screen? Well, can't I share the, the Can't I share the window? Con? Uh, you can also share the whole window. Then the I have to decide what to share. 
Yes, you have to choose yes, the sir. thing. Here it is. Can you see it? Okay. Not yet? Yes, now yes, it's coming. It's yes, coming. Sir. Yes. See, we can see it now. Your screen we can see, but the presentation is yet to come. Yes, presentation is there. Now? Yes, we can see the screen. Okay. Just a moment, I go back to the beginning. You see the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this was living architecture. Let's let's take a walk in Venice. Let's walk inside. Venice the Hearts. This this is the narrows Calais, 55 centimeters in Venice. And this is what is the main thing of Venice that is emotion in between shadow and light. What makes emotion is the contrast. Look at this reflection. The water change your mind and change your perception of the space. Look at those three drawings. The first is Piranesi, is a drawing of the prisons. Then you have Hesher, inspired to Piranesi. And the last one is a picture I took, and inspired to the three of them. Again, this experience. Here, on the left, you see that what I mean with threshold. Always in Venice, you have threshold in between light and shadow, in between fresh and warm. On the right, you see two paintings of the Renaissance, of the ideal, ideal city. And down is a picture I took of Venice. It looks very much like. Let's go here. Look over here. I was speaking about this joint venture of nature and human action. We have, uh, when you have to make a canal, escape a canal, you just start. You start escaping, then the water comes in and out. And this is called scomenzera, because in Venetian, cominciare, to begin, is comenzare, scomenzare. So scomenzera is the canal. If I want to escape this canal, I start escaping here. Then the water come in and out and take away the land and give the shape. That's why Venice has all these forms, natural curves and things like that. Here you have an example. So what you do, you make a border with sand or with wood pails. And then slowly, you can see it here, the water comes in and takes sand. Then it goes out through the wood, but leave the sand inside. So this is I, the I, how the islands come out. This started about 10 years ago. In another 10 years, you will have a double island with here all the boats in the middle. I was speaking about literary, about the architectural text. This is a place where they build the boats, the gondola. Let's see this. So look at the inside. It's like a wood building. It's like the Arpin architecture, al architecture of the mountains. Then you have a face, the outside face that you see over here, that is typical from Venice. What is it saying? What is the meaning of this? It's saying that those people who work with the wood, they were coming from the mountain. From the mountain where the wood, from the forest up in the mountain, came the wood used to build the foundation of the building in Venice, and also all the, the, the buildings. So those people were coming from the mountain and they have a kind of memory of that architecture. 
So inside of this space of the court, the space look as mountain. Outside, it looks like Venice. So that is the past time and the present time. So those people have their roots in the mountain. Look at this changing the outside, the facade in bricks. slowly become in wood and the balcony and all the way of making this building is wood is like the alpine architecture because this is how they used to do it that was architecture for them you can see it over here it looked like a chalet is exact you will find the exactly building up in the alps in venice the rules is the exception it's this is interesting when you go through the grand canal and you go out of the grand canal then in your memory you keep the memory of an harmonious homogeneous space it is not. What is interesting is that is a plural unit of diversity and variety, where the single detail is not important. Actually, is important because in this upper unit, it stays together the detail, so individual of the community and the ensemble, the wall. So look at this, when you, what is interesting is, what is keep the unit is the void of the Grand Canal, like a snake. This is the unity. You can change all the parts. It doesn't change the perception of the space. Look at all the differences. Those are three buildings. This was the roof, and then they added this. Or look over here. Or over here, that was a calle, and it's closed. And you don't feel that is something giving a disturb. Also here, you see that the building growed up. Also here, also here, or here in the corner. Look at this. And there are some strategy, composition strategies that keep together the parts. Here is the color, are not the windows almost the balcony but are not exactly the same and there is something else that is this page of the architectural text tell us that is over here all the windows why there are all those windows because here there is a big room going from one side to the other of the building so you need light so there we have a unique big room those are the rooms at a side, smaller one. Again, here you have a calle that have been closed. Here you have several addiction. You can see this was the height of the building at the beginning. And look here, we were speaking about the, the shape. Everything here is not straight. It's difficult to have a straight angle. You have it only in San Marco, made by San Sovino, but we will talk another time about this. But here, when you look at this three fora, that means three windows, three holes, when you look at the distance, it seems unique. When you walk close to it, you see that it takes the shape of the calle that is coming from the canal that was there before, so from the water. So it's adapting. Again, here. There was a calle, there is another calle, another calle over here. And look at here, the relation in between this building and the big church. Again, they left it a void where the windows is, and then the calle was closed with windows and a door. Look at this building, it's one building. But it's made of two parts, completely different. Windows are different. 
here you have another level another stage that you don't have on the other side again look at this this is one building but how different it is so you is symmetrical until here then it's symmetrical on this here so the center two windows two windows center two windows two window and then you have a slice in the middle this probably was a cale at the beginning or here you see how it grows up we'll go fast look at here and that there is another window and look at this building it seems you see symmetrical but then you see a shadow over here it means that was that was constructed in, in different moments and also the shape of the window is different here from there and from here so this is in architecture in Ven Arch venetian architecture is sedimentary again here i just show to you some other example look at this but it's white and have a window like the other and when you go pass you pass through it fast you don't feel it here you have two examples of growing up this is an example so venice is very difficult it doesn't accept the changement changement is something important because uh, you have to metabolize the change in venice the changes are very slow they take a lot of time but when they come they're very strong they don't change this is a building be built by ignazio gardella he is a master of modern architecture as you see the building looks as a venetian building is unregular it has different balcony and openings this huge series of balcony it looks like the other but it's different and it has already in its own shape the growth of the building this was accepted this was the first experience of modern architecture of the last century then here you have other example look at this you have the feeling of a unique building and is a unique building but it's made of parts and look at this the roof is one roof for two different parts and here you have a canal what is important is the aligned of all the building not the single part again look at this this was the building and this was a calle that got close you can see from the difference in between the straight window and the arch over here so they close it but they use it the same color to have a sort of continuity in between the two here you have other example here look at this you have a sort of abacus so you have some shapes so you can't build in venice what you want you have to use a certain language here you can see this element that is abaino is called you find it here and you find it also here here maybe on the, behind the corner the owner of this house is the owner of this that's why he took the same color of the plaster outside showing that this have been has added but is different here you see the same kind of strategy so all this part is added to the previous building but you don't feel it because the kind of opening and of the building are the same look at this along the canal you see the same white color same windows and then you see that this is a modern building added to a older building again calle here calle here so if you stop looking at the text the text is shows you that the exception is the rule that makes a upper most important uniqueness from the variety and diversity that's why for example venetian didn't allowed to build modern architecture in venice 
Palladio, that for a part of his life, he was the architect of Venice, they let it, him build only out of Venice, on the back, on La Giudecca, where you see his modern language at a distance. Those are two churches of San Giorgio and Redentore here. Let's go, let's, I want to say something about tradition. Generally, it is used to opposite tradition and innovation. Instead, the opposites are rather tradition and novelty. Tradition gives comfort, conveys a sense of security and protection in the face of the unknown of novelty. Preserve customs and protects established habits that settle in the costumes and tradition of the community that inhabit a certain place at a certain time. Therefore, both the spatial, spatial and the temporal factors wave. Tradition reflects the spirit of the place and is a consequence of the spirit of the time. The novelty provokes a hybrid feeling of curious distrust and suspicious curiosity. The curiosity of the experimenters and the distrust of the conservative, conservatives. The new is only different from what preceded. It is the son of the market logic, supported by promotion and marketing. It is used, consumed, and replace it quickly, and then often abandoned to oblivion. The bridge between tradition and novelty is innovation, which permits and updates tradition with its effectiveness, giving qualitative consistence to change. Innovation is an increase in efficiency, not synonymous with novelty or tradition. It coincides with the novelty only when it is proposed. But to establish itself as an authentic innovation, it must become traditional, to be recognized and widely adopted. Pass the prudent daily scrutiny of repeated action until it becomes a lasting habit. To do this, the time necessary for metabolization is required, a slow time that leads to lasting change. Tradition is a break and obstacle which innovation must be able to overcome. It has precisely for this positive value of solid innovation. It guarantees continuity in the course of the change. It slows down, but does not prevent. On the contrary, it strengthens, it strengthens, because when a novelty proves truly innovative, it is absorbed into the body of tradition, which is enriched in vitality. If it is connoted as a mere impediment to change, tradition is reduced to a folkloristic phenomenon that opposes the vital spirit of renewal. Innovation is, is experimented novelty. Just an authentic, just as authentic tradition is slows and uninterrupted updating. This process is not valid everywhere at the same time and equally. For this reason, different tradition coexist and population survive considered primitive by those who judge them as they feel more evolved, only because they do not take into account the importance of considering the position of observation in relation to the reference system. The more particular a habitat is, the more the inhabitants who want to inhabit those places are required to refine their behaviors until they metabolize them into aptitude, 
developing techniques appropriate to the circumstances and, and changing the characteristics, characteristics of the materials used. Form. From this, we arrive at the forma mentis, the form of the mind, which has its foundation in the primacy of the method, in addressing the issues, the setting of the research on the result itself is more important, which is, which in another place may prove ineffective or at another time become obsolete. Instead, the know how, how based on questioning, observation, analysis, synthesis, and experience, maintain constantly validity and involves the revision of the result to update the outcome to the circumstances. So let's go back to Venice and look at this. This was the previous bridge, a bridge in wood with pails and an opening of the meeting to let the boats pass through it. This was a painting of Carpaccio showing this bridge. This was the bridge and this was the later on bridge, again built it on wood. It was not easy, the process of changing the Rialto Bridge. Real, uh, Palladio made two projects. This was the first, it was a classic bleach. Introverted, as you see, he had two forum as the Roman architecture, and then there was the passage in the middle. Then he made, he improved it with some two like temple on the two sides, a passage, and again, a form like a temple in the middle, and stairs on the two sides. Huge, like a piece of town on the water, crossing the water, with three arches in the middle. Here, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, okay. sir. yes, yes, I was because afraid. Are, yeah, it gets difficult because when you are speaking alone, but we are keeping mute so that we can hear you better. Okay, okay, let's go. So this is yes. a canaletto view of the building of Palladio that have never been built. This is another, it's called Capriccio, that is a caprice, is a joke with Palladian buildings. This is, for example, a shape with the three arches of a bridge that is not there in another part of Venice. They used to paint it afterwards to metabolize the change of that bridge. Again, another painting showing the bridge of Palladio. But the change didn't take place. And at the end, they built this bridge that if you see, it has a shape like the previous bridge in wood, with the two sides coming up. And the new thing was this big arch. They made a competition. So you see other projects that keep that shape of the bridge. This, for example, he proposed a civil building on the bridge. It was called Marastoni. This was the sculpture of the constructed bridge to show you how important are the woods. Every building have on the basement a forest of pails where you put the stone and then this is the basement, the base, the foundation of the entire bridge made in wood and stone. Here was a view with a run of the bulls and the play with wheel chairs. Again, to show you how the change was different, this was a building metal built in front of the station. Today we have another bridge built at the beginning of the 20th century. This was built by the Austrian that came here after Napoleon. When the Republic of Venice ended, the French Napoleon came here and then and then the Austrian from Austria, they came back. This is the construction of the Academia Bridge. Previous bridge was again in metal, 
And today they built it, at that time they built it in wood because they wanted to do a competition. A competition. But then Venetian fall in love with this bridge that was temporary and that already rebuilt it several times because they wanted. Now that building is metabolized as a building and is extraordinary because it has a big arch in wood. It's not simple and it's not um, actually functional because we have to rebuild it because of cigarettes that burn part of it and because of the consumption. But Venetian like it. It's their Academia Bridge. This is Calatrava Bridge. This is the new bridge of the station on the back in stone, built at the beginning of the century. This is built a few decades ago. I like it. It's really beautiful with all those structures that looks like bones, but it's not good. It's not good because this curve is not constant. So the dimension of the height of every step and the depth of the step is different. My grandfather used to say to me, pay attention when you design a stair. Because you, he used to say, you, don't, you must not break, break the step. So you must have a regular rhythm. Here, you don't have it. So people sleep here. Also because on top, there is very nice, the, 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 the pavement is in, in uh, uh, glass. But when it's humid, as usual in Venice, you sleep on it. So there is only on the center, in the center, a part in stone, and all the people are walking in the center with the other part of the, build, the, the bridge empty. So this is very beautiful. I like it, but it's not good. So to me, it's not a good quality of architecture. We were speaking about the chances you had in, uh, in, uh, in Ahmedabad, in India in Chandigarh or Ahmedabad to have building of modern architects. In Venice, we had three important chances. Here is Frank Lloyd Wright in the 50s in Venice. He made a building, he made a project for this small building of the Grand Canal, but he never had a chance to build it. He didn't allow it, him because it was too modern. This was the building. So this was the shape it has it had a relation with the uh, smaller building on the side here and then was growing up in relation with the build, bigger building. Here you see a rendering of the building in the Grand Canal. As you see, it could be built. It. So it was an ideological uh, break that did let him build because you lose it in the sequence of different building, of the variety of building. And this was a loss of occasion for Venice. Le Corbusier used to say that technique and poetic, architect and engineer have stays together. It doesn't, it's not, a, you know, a precise balance, but they both have to stay. So l'homme spiritual, the spiritual man, and l'homme économique, the economic man, must stay together. He made a project for the Hospital of Venice, another lost chance. I think it was an amazing project. Look at it with all the cords, and it's like the fabric of the town of Venice. One part was with pails in the water, so the water could flow underneath. And the other one was on the water as the fabric, the urban fabric. Also the height of the building was the medium height of the fabric of the town. So that the emergency of the monuments, churches and domes and things like that could come over it. Then we had a third chance that was Lu Kang who came in Venice in the 60s. Here you can see him with Carlos Carpa 
in the School of Architecture, here on the roof, looking at San Marco and one of his sketches of San Marco. He made a project for an auditorium in the gardens of the Biennale, where there are all the pavilions of the different countries. Here is the first sketches. Then he had a second project. He shifted the project here in the Arsenale. The Arsenale is a huge water square where they used to build the, uh, the boats. Look at this building, how long it is. Because they have to do the huge, very long uh, ropes for the boats. The project was in this position right here. And it was a bridge. So the culture as a bridge. The interesting thing was that the curve of the bridge that we saw in Rialto was the other way around. So it's like the way the structure was staying on top and was going down close to the water. Very interesting. Here you can see the structure. So all this was to, uh, let's go back without presentation. Where can I take away this again? You can uh, stop sharing. Stop sharing. Is it right? Yes. Can you see me now? Yes, we can see you. We, I was yeah. seeing you earlier also when you were talking. You are seeing? Oh, you were seeing also. You were visible, so yes. Okay. So this is, all this was to show you, to speak to you about... The, the complexity of a place. Architecture is not something simple. It's irreducible to the beauty or to the functional aspect. We have to think and we have to be humil? Hum, hum, Humilta? How do you say? Humil or no? You have, you have to uh, be, uh, you know, humane. Human. You mean, yes. No, it's not only human. It's uh, um, uh, humility. Wait. humility. Yeah, humility. That's it. That's it. Excuse me. There is a call. Okay. So humility. This it is. And uh, uh, you know we have to to accept. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there. A call, a call came and I can't see you anymore. Let me see where we are. <laughs> Excuse me. I We can see you. Okay. So that's good. I don't know where it is, but it must you be somewhere. Google, yeah, you may have to click the Google Meet uh, symbol. Just be careful that you don't exit. I should be here. Okay, yes. I can see. Yes. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about. So the complexity of architecture. I hope I gave you the idea. Absolutely. There was also another part, but I don't, I think we had enough. There was a project of Palladio for... San Marco for the Ducal Palace that he never built again, but it's not in, important to, to see it. So here it is. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I have made notes, but I think it will be good to hear from students uh, some uh, key points of, you know, what they would like to take um, from this our uh, talk. It's really, really wonderful and I, I would like to do a summary of it, but it's good that students do it because uh, they are uh, supposed to do their assignments on some learning from you. <laughs> yes, questions and suggestions and views. Actually, can I add it? another concept? Yes, please. Yes, I, please. I forgot and I, I think it's important. 
is the enlarged notion of context. Yes. Interlaced with the idea of genius loci, this Latin word. Genius yes. loci in Roman religion was the genius uh, tutelary deity of the place, but not only of the place, but of the individual, of the person, individual person of the place and of everything in a habitat. In its essence, the intimate nature is the soul. So yes. genius loci is the soul of a place. Loci is the plural of locus, place, yeah. again. That is the special entity determined mentally and materia, materially. On a humanistic perspective, place is a precise, emotionally lived space. Instead, from the scientific point of view, is a precise place identified with longitude and latitude. The reference to the context can lead to regionalism or regionality. Two terms that have the same regional root, same word, but are careers to, of two different contextualization options. In the first case, the ideological and prejudicial approach aims at the homogeneity and recognizability of the aesthetic result. Regionalism is a ideological approach. Regionalism is attachment to the way of appearing, while regionality is a way of being. Both regionalism and regionality refer to the idea of tradition, interpreted in opposite ways, while regionalism is uncritical and aims to preserve everything as it is, without any change. Regionality is a critical approach that considers tradition as an opportunity to slow progress from the verification of the effectiveness of the solution that have already been adopted or of the innovation that are proposed whose effectiveness must be, must be verified with daily use and therefore, if the result is positive, the innovation are slowly embodied in traditional know-how and in the practice rooted in a place. So this is very important. The context, the idea of context and of genius logic, spirit, space and time, spirit of the place, spirit of the time. Excuse me. No, I, I'm, I was really enjoying it. I mean, it reminded me of my days uh, except when I was a student, when you were teaching. I guess uh, you had a chance also to uh, talk to students at SEP. So I was completely immersed in what you were saying. So uh, let us hear a few points from students. And I would definitely like to summarize my learning after students have spoken a bit. Mm. But you must be knowing that students here in India are uh, not so much speaking, but uh, I have a good bunch of students who ask good questions. So I'm hoping they will I'll have some questions. Please go on. It can be questions, suggestions, anything you would like to add. So please, anybody who would like to start, Garvid, you seem to be almost yes, ready. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, hello, sir. Uh, Hello. And thank you for such a uh, very insightful uh, talk. And uh, uh, I was uh, I wanted to ask, like, unlike uh, Europe, uh, Indian as a subcontinent is, uh, you know, in Europe we have a very central epicenter for architectural language, like uh, Greece and uh, Rome, and very few. So it was very easy to, uh, you know, control the architectural language of that area. Like you talked about Venice, also the people uh, in that area were very clear that uh, they wanted uh, uh, the regionalism versus regionality, which you talked about right now. It Like they, they wanted innovation, but in the sense of uh, that, that was related with it, their past. So uh, what, what about like uh, the, people like in India, uh, it is very, 
problematic when the competition is from your own people like uh, here there are many example many good examples of different centers as architectural language as uh, also they want a new thing in every other day like one thing it has been built and uh, people say that no this has already been done we, i think we should do something and, and at some point of, point of time they uh, lose their track and they uh, you know lose their track of regionalism and uh, some sort so how can we handle that maybe novelty you wanted to say apart from regionalism the whole novelty is yes. gone itself yes in the this is coming from the idea that you have to run to be <laughs> in the first line this is you nailed it you have the you only problem it. you have the problem of not being conscious of the value of your tradition every time i came in india is amazing i discover something else even walking in the street i find something i love it you don't you're not conscious of the value of this and you were face you have a model of the modern time there is something shifting different that's why we have you have a lot of glass building and then you can't clean it or you have like uh, like the the how do you call the 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 Do you want to say those uh, facades? No, no. I was thinking of like the mill owners building the the facade. The, 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 how you say when Louvers, you stop the, the louvers? Bracelets only. Yes, you have it even at north sides. <laughs> yes, just for the sake of having. Sense. There is no sun <laughs> over there, so this is you know you bring this is the change from symbol. to sign yes. symbol in latin sim balen sim is together balen is staying symbol is something that stays together that have sense when you bring this symbol and you put it somewhere else <laughs> as for example palladio was doing by building a temple in the middle of a bridge so that become a sign is not a symbol anymore is something different it can be used in the language you can change it when i, I was in sicily with uh, uh, james sterling we had a tour together in sicily and i took him to see the cathedral of syracuse to me the side of the cathedral was fantastic because there were the columns and the capitals of the greek temple coming out from the wall so you have this wall with all those columns he came and he said ah interesting <laughs> then he saw the facade that was baroque that to me was baroque too much a lot of languages all together full of signs without any uh, any meaning anymore mm-hmm. and he said oh that's beautiful look at what a freedom of the language so you can also have that but the important yes. thing is to recognize it and to respect a sense of unity we were uh, to us was easily because our evolution was like a line coming from india from sanskrit even in the language i like root meaning so i go backwards usually i go from italian to latin to greek and then behind greek there is always sanskrit but greek and latin the classic age that was in quite a short time a few hundred years and it uh, in a small space the mediterranean area uh, auser he, he wrote a book on mediterranean and uh, he was thinking of this train thing that mediterranean area has mountains all around so it was a court it was like a court with all the people moving who went over was marco polo who went right to china and he went through the middle east 
Venice is something shifting. Me- Venice and uh, Istanbul, that was called Constantinople at that time, are the two m- meeting point of East and Western, com- Eastern and Western culture. Constantinople is the Western culture going on the East side. Venice is the Eastern culture coming in the Western side. That's why the narrow streets and the buildings. Well, we also took the columns and the, the, the horses and all those things are coming from East. And the idea was Venice connecting was ombelicus mundi, was collect, connecting the two cultures. So what is important is to be conscious of what we are of who we are and how we change because we're not once and always the same forever. You will be surprised that in the last class I have been asking students who we are, what is India, where is India (laughs) and we have really had difficulty finding answer for it. Because we want, first we need to understand ourselves, you know. And if we are not understanding ourselves, which means we are not understanding our culture and we have to drift away to look for something which is more ideal. So this lookout for ideal is a distant dream, whereas probably we are sitting on the ideal itself, you know, in India. So yeah. this is where um, in the recent time, like uh, like people like Professor Akhtar, Professor uh, Joy Sain, they have been uh, heavily uh, advocating the Indic uh, architecture and Indic knowledge of uh, our, you know, vernacular architecture. It's also important that people write and critique a lot what we have. It's not only to appreciate, but even crit- being critical about it. The more it is written, the more thinking is going on. And I think that is also, um, uh, which is a week here, we need to develop that skill more to be able to articulate and, you know, analyze things more deeper than its meaning. I mean, yes, we want to have more questions from our dear students. I hope you have a little bit more time because uh, we, I would I have like time. to have a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else would like to go? Uh, Monica, Arsh, Arsha? Arpit, I see Kumit also here, and Asaji. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, yes. sir. Omnath, yes, Hello. please. Uh, will you put that Kalatrava bridge into Kala Agastos? In that the Kala? Kala Agastos. Kala Agastos, what you said, that, that Kalatrava bridge. Did you not, put that in the typology? It's yes, not Kala uh, Kagatsia, it's not, because it's beautiful, but it's not good. Yes, sir. Then how so come that? That how come that bridge uh, uh, there to uh, there to build actually because it's only curve showing but that is not present and uh, that is not even the showing depiction the tradition actually in that bridge you are I don't see the idea he is uh, showing uh, itself he is showing itself he's doing <laughs> something for itself you want yeah, to yeah I was about to say that he, that's he, an artist the idea okay. of the Alto Bridge, mm-hmm. out of the shape that is not important, is a huge idea. You okay. have it here in Rialto Bridge and you have it in Florence in Ponte Vecchio. With mm-hmm. all the shops going through the bridge, that means that the town flows on the two banks. It's all okay. one. So there is an idea. In Platon, in the Greek philosopher, he says, he used to say that you always need to have an idea inside. Toendon eidos. If there is not an idea, there is void, is empty. Uh, again, let's go to Vastu. Yes. Vastu. Okay. Yes. Vastu is a word coming from vase. Mm-hmm. Vas. Vas is like a glass. What is a vas? What is what it remains in between nothing that is outside and the nothing that is inside? Architecture is something very teeny. When you want to do big things, you're not making good architecture. 
Even when you have building like Taj Mahal, that is huge, it's important. Wow. Oh, look. My skin is moving when I think <laughs> of Taj Mahal. When I was there, I went in and I saw all this garden-like paradise with all the animals working with the light and then this white basement. And you have the stairs and you go inside the light. I had to close my eyes or to put some uh, sunglasses because what's going inside, going over the life. And then you walk on this space with this sun, all white. And I couldn't even see. It was a really emotional experience. And then what you reach? The river, the nation right. on the other side. And you have this kind of dialogue and contrast. Mm -hmm. There is an idea. There is a soul in that project. I don't find this in in uh, uh, Calatrava Bridge. I like it. Yeah. The shade is very nice from the Grand Canal. I like it. But it's without soul. Mm -hmm. okay. I think you also made a very important point when you were um, talking that uh, when you do architecture, it's um, not for you, it's for the people. So if you if you are a tailor and if you are doing a dress for your size, uh, then it is not going to fit the user. So I think um, exactly. that we, um, that, uh, the bridge and we have a huge body of literature on narcissism in architecture and we do have uh, such kind of work being heavily uh, discussed on that. And um, it's not about the architecture per se. Uh, it's uh, also about what it is doing to the context. I think. Yeah. Um, so there are yeah. two ways to look at it. You know, either it has to yeah. stand out so that I am there, or it has to say I am there with you. You know. Yeah. Uh, I'm things. sorry. Can I add something? Yes, uh, Devanshi. So Giovanni, you have another of your old student from um, <laughs> Ahmedabad. <laughs> <laughs> and my student as well. Yes, Devanshi, please say. Yeah, so I would like to add something about the Kalatrava Bridge. Uh, you know, after experiencing it firsthand, I feel like the only structure uh, in the context looks like designed by some architect and he wants to show himself here. Like many of buildings are, they are like, there are many uh, famous architects who have worked here uh, in and around the context, but somehow they managed to emerge into the context and they doesn't look out of it. Here, Kalatrava Bridge, definitely I'll agree to the uh, professor, but it looks very beautiful. It looks uh, like... If you don't use it, you can look at it as oh, wow. you don't use it. <laughs> Perfect. But then when you go uh, over it, you if, if you try to move some luggage from that bridge, it is <laughs> like struggle. hilarious. It's had I have a tight shell actually. I have been yeah. twice and I fell once very good on that yeah. bridge. Even without the luggage, you have with, a with feeling slip. of scarcity. You have a feeling of scarcity that I'll fall, I'll fall, I'll just slip off. Something like that. Is autoreferential. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It speaks to itself. Once mm -hmm. I wrote something about my Guruji Doshi, and was that I find this in his architecture something that helped me to understand how to value the architecture. Yes. There is the ability to put together three things. Unicity of places. Every place is unique. If I do a project here and then they ask me to shift it there, I, I'm not able. I have to change my project. Even a few hundred meters or a few kilometers, it changes. It's another thing. I can't do a project without the context. So unicity of places. Plurality of way of life. You live in a way in Venice. You live in a way in Sicily. You live in a way in Ahmedabad. You live in another way in south of India. And universality of forms. So this is something that you don't need to study. When you go to the Taj Mahal, you feel the same amazing feeling 
the same emotion in the face of all the people. It doesn't matter where they're coming from, what is their culture, what is their religion, it doesn't matter. The form goes straight to eat our art. So this is, to me, the real quality of architecture. So the function is inside the plurality of way of life. So if I live in a certain way, you have to answer, uh, to feed my needs. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So this is to me what I found in Doshi's architecture. There are some buildings like, like, like Gufa that often is considered a very nice aesthetic building to me is a philosophical building. When we built underground, the walls become, the thickness of the wall become huge since you go down. There, you are three centimeters. I was in India when it was under construction. I have all the photos of the pictures of the Gufa under construction. And to me it was incredible. It's like judo or karate or all the, the Eastern way of fighting. So you get a force coming from outside that is coming from the ground, from the air, and you let it slipper on you and go on another. And then they dissolve. This is philosophic. This is philosophy. This is a way of life. And also in Venice, when I say variety is becoming a unity, so is accepting the diverse. Uh, the, the Venetian were migrants because they migrated and they came in the water and they settled in the water. So they accept, but they have to change slowly. So if you know them, you have to introduce slow changement. Yeah, I think I think that it's um, strategic location between the two cultures uh, can be very well, uh, you know, embedded in what you are so saying about this plurality, but at the same time, the whole idea of having this universality of unity, of having one language, you know, so even if there are these minute changes of the lanes and alleys, uh, they, they tend to sit together with their big brothers, which are the main buildings around it, you know. And that is something um, uh, if we want to relate uh, with our architecture today, not with the traditional architecture like we see in Hampi, in, uh, in um, uh, Jaipur, in Bhopal, in Hyderabad. I'm talking about all the uh, downtowns. Now, we had a completely, uh, you know, uh, uh, plural architecture, but at the same time, Udaipur for that matter. But at the same time, they belonged to, you know, one regional identity, I will say. But today, it is also a reflection of social, political culture we have. So uh, the more we talk about independence, the more we talk about, you know, uh, democracy, the more we talk about I do what I do, uh, it is also reflected in the way uh, our architecture is dif drifting towards narcissism, not only by architects, but also by the users, that every building wants to stand by itself uh, alienating itself from others, you know, not only, uh, uh, you know, uh, wanting to be different, but different to the extent of being alien to the context. And that's kind of a desire of the society. And I think it is also a manifestation of freedom of expression to uh, another extreme that I, that I belong to this society is not uh, it is still, uh, you know, uh, not at this moment so much uh, privileged and so much appreciated by the community itself, you know. So something which we need to learn in architecture about it, that we have, we are not only changing community's perspective, but community itself is also demanding certain kind of things, maybe for some reason. So Yeah. Uh, and we need to rethink urban planning. Yes. Because it's too rigid. The functional division of parts of the town is crazy. Here with the COVID-19 in, in Europe is coming out the idea of a pluricentric town. It's called yes. the town of the 15 minutes. You have to reach yes. in 15 minutes all the needs you have. And uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we 
we have to we, we can't give up with planning and leaving free space to every will but reasonable reasonably orienting the changement we have an eye an example in the architecture of doshi again arania yes or as we saw in venice we had an abacus an ensemble of solutions yes. and then the inhabitant could put together how it, how it, it wanted with his desire the same thing was built by and not same thing uh, it has some relation with the same approach was the project of alvaro siza in yes. uh, in portugal so in evora where he built the services the pipes and the electric thing and then the plots and, and the everyone plots. was built with several forms so we have to rethink we have to have more flexibility in venice for example today you are not allowed to change anything even inside the building and this is stupid because you kill life how can i live in a space that was thought 1600 years ago or 1000 years ago I mean, it's stupid. I can understand the outside, and we saw that even in the outside, change men yes. are absorbed if you are able to, you know, to manage with them. So you have to, you 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 need to have a strategy. But inside the house, I have to change. Okay, uh, I understand that is you're not allowed to use concrete. This is because Venice is elastic; it has yes. to move. So all the earthquakes here nothing happens because it moves and then it stops also the bricks are something elastic so it works so i can understand that not no concrete okay but the rooms and you adding a bathroom or enlarging a room i can't have a reference with the original type as it was that's crazy that's stupid so the urban planning have to be flexible in space and in time we can't do a 10 years of studying for a plan and then when it's ready it's always it's already fast fast it's fast <laughs> but we have to find a way to work in the present so um how do you um, sorry i'm i'm bypassing a student's question because i really need to ask a question right here uh with the growing um uh, growing clan where i also belong now uh the growing clan of de development and de growth where uh we we do want to talk about uh, you know cleaning the habitation areas and it it goes very much with this 15 uh, minutes uh, habitation and uh, covid actually uh, uh, told us that we need to have small habitats um, which are more you know cohesive in nature but it also has to bring that community feeling which is lost in these metropoles as uh, as we are seeing i mean people don't know and don't communicate with with each other how is the development being taken there because the genesis came from europe now uh, and it is picking up last i gave a presentation uh, in japan so japan is also picking up with the development and the growth so how what do you think about it because you, we the, uh, when you talked about urban planning i thought this is a good time to talk uh, pitch this question so the, the mayor of paris talk about this 15 minutes town and this is interesting she is changing the plan of the entire town this is really important in venice is natural we have it yes what is the limit in india i, I saw is all these societies There are you know a lot of islands with very small communities of few gated people. communities <laughs> the problem is of the public space yes that is used by people who live in the public space with charpai or whatever it is but is not lived by all the other that just cross it fast with the car or with yeah. the motorbike or with whatever it is or rickshaw but they don't live it i used to walk in in amravat and it was it was not organized for that mm-hmm. i think the most important thing is to organize and design the space in between then you can connect parts of the town 
and you can, you know, make a design of the town in part. Otherwise, you run. You only run. You go across, but you don't live really the space. I think uh, the public realm, uh, which are the streets and public spaces here, are the leftover spaces. So um, the planning here is more uh, geared towards the habitation as in the house and housing. And after the house, house and housing, then there is these corridors of movement where you are not supposed to wait. And after all this is done, whatever is left in, in that space is the public space which is, I think, uh, a completely different approach than in the very way our traditional architecture actually happened. Because the traditional architecture in India itself uh, had a genesis in the space. So building was enveloping the space rather than the space was the leftover of the building. You know, so this is yeah. where uh, we, we have to relearn whatever we had, actually. Exactly, rather. exactly. <laughs> So, and I think uh, people like Doshi and Korea could decode it much earlier in their career uh, than most of the people are able to. I mean, many big architects today are still practicing uh, uh, the, the very narcissist way of doing things without even getting into the architecture and really doing whatever is the demand of the project, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think it's about, again, the soul of the project or understanding the spirit or, you know, a, a being with the project, you know, a, to be part of it instead of just doing it for somebody else with whom you do not relate. So I, I think this, um, you actually nailed your first line when you responded to the student that people are running here. This whole yes. rush yes. is ne really not letting people to think. Yes. That's a, that's a huge and it's problem. The same rush in complete in the opposite way but the same rush i found in new york in manhattan yes. where everyone is running and they don't <laughs> even know where they're going i mean they run up and down here and there it's the, right, the opposite from venice here you have another quality that is in terms of time and space you have time in the space and space within the time what i mean yes yes time in Absolutely. the space is the rhythm. So it's the dynamic experience. And in the rhythm, the rhythm is individual because it's my breath, my art, my thought, and my footstep. It's not yours, it's mine. Yeah. Then I have space in the time. That means the poses. Yeah. You are not in a rush. The time is more long. You think a lot. For 15 years, I, I, I lived in the land here, not in Venice. At the end of the day, I felt something. I was losing something. There was something lost. And I couldn't understand what was it. Thought. Thought. At the end of the day, I was not thinking. There was a quad of thought losing because I was thinking of the traffic light, of the car, of this and that, yes. but not of myself. I couldn't know what was the rhythm of my art or of my breath, because we are always in a rush. So we have to go back to put together the detail and the wall. And this is what I was talking about on Venice, that the detail is part of the wall. It's not something that is cancelled. It's still there and it's very important. But the, communi the community and the architecture doesn't accept who want to be a protagonist. I mean, to be, uh, you know, more than the others, different from the others. So you have to be slightly the same. Not exactly the same, but slightly the same. And then you're accepted. <clears throat> I think there's a, there, there's a very simple saying, no, that if you want to be extraordinary, you have to first learn to be ordinary, ordinary. to go that extraordinary, you know. And, and I think that's very important in architecture per se, because we are unintendedly changing the very course of uh, evolution of society here uh, by trying to jump uh, uh, the natural evolution or the progress of the community as well as the society. Because you referred to uh, New York, 
uh, I mean, it, it is not a hidden thing in India here that uh, most of the reference we make in terms of uh, going modern, it comes from West, but actually far West. And I could see that difference only by living in both the continents, in Europe as well as uh, US. What is the difference? And I think the only difference, and you nailed it again, is the time to think, time to pause, time to cherish, time to enjoy everything. Why to rush when your breath uh, is already, uh, you know, counted and you have, you can't really breathe more than 14 times, 11 times in a minute. You better uh, cherish those things. And I think somewhere um, in, in, in the rush to do too many things, we have reached a stage where actually we have overdevelopment in the country. And that's where the degrowth and de-development are now getting talked about. And it is nothing but going back to the roots. Going and looking at the rural living, looking at the, you know, living with nature and all these things. Because what do you do with so much of architecture, which is of no use? It's just like the bridge we talked about, you know. You can have 10 bridges, but if you are unable to appreciate and use it, and if the bridges are not connecting people, if the bridges are dividing the society, I think those bridges need to be thought about. So somewhere social political landscape of the country or the society is also influencing the way architecture is dealt by. Why I say this is that most of the architects remain indifferent to what's going on in the society and uh, in the political landscape. They want to sanitize themselves and keep doing the business and, as usual. And that business as, as usual itself is a race, you know. Because if they participate in the social political activities of the country, they will know better what is yeah. the need of the country. And there is another another thing. Let me think. There are three words in Latin, in Greek, about the town. Yes. First is urbs. Urbs is the physic town. Then you have civitas. Chitta, town, civitas, that is the community, so the social level. Then you have polis, that is politics. Politics should come from the society, from the civitas, yes. from the urbs. This is our problem, that is not connected anymore. It's something yeah. going beyond. It's different planes. It doesn't work. And Today, everyone wants to speak. No one wants to listen. Yes. Everyone wants to look, but is not able to see. This is our problem. So we have to go back to slowness our life and yes, to think to slow. more. So. I think COVID actually told us to slow down. I wish the architect really got the message clearer. I, I, I really wish that architects also got the message that we don't need to build too many things. We need to cherish what we have rather than building new and breaking them up every few years, you know, which is going to happen in India. Uh, probably you uh, may be aware or not aware. I don't know, but I can give you a statistics that India has uh, nearly 15 to 20 percent of uh, vacancy rate in the country in urban areas. So we have already 20 percent extra constructed and built which we are not appreciating, which are not functional, which are either abandoned, which are, are too old, and we still want to do more rather than appreciating what we have. And I think this course is because of that we, we learn to appreciate what we have than uh, looking for something new. You know, this whole uh, idea of looking for new and more has to somewhere slow down, with the, even with the ecological uh, constraints we are getting. You know? Yeah. Okay. We have to go back to the dialogue. Dialogue. <laughs> yes. There is another word. Incontro. Encounter. In Italian. In, inside. Contro. Is against. If you want to encounter someone, you have to go on the other side. Yes. This is meeting someone. It's not bringing him to your side <laughs> so that you are stronger and... It, that's not, that's that's a scontro, contro. There is against. You have to walk in. You have to walk yeah. in. And we, this is 
the cultural revolution we have to do. So this is yeah. what I'm working on as an activist, as an yeah. architect, as a human being, as a, whatever it is. I'm a president of as- association of habitants of the area here, of this community. But there is the fishermen, the bakery, not the fancy shops, all the people. And we try to do things together, to go on together. This is what we have to do. We have to make, build bridges, not walls. Yeah. walls. And we still build walls, too many walls everywhere around us and far and everywhere. In fact, the city is made up of walls. Let's put a door in the wall so yeah. that we can pass through it. Now, our cities are getting made of islands, too many islands. This society, that society, this gate, that gate. So we don't need water, actually. We are actually a set of million islands in one city and yeah. closed with uh, doors and walls. And we, I mean, I'm really hoping that the younger generation is able to see these walls and, you know, walk across the wall and be more, uh, I will say, more, uh, you know, community architect than architect itself. It is also to do with the education here where uh, architects get this notion that the, they are getting the education to serve uh, uh, the people who uh, are going to come with a bag of money, you know. So community architects are very different than architects themselves, you know. So already we have clans here. Uh, so I think uh, this kind of course calls for more community activist kind of architects than the rich people's architects. Bachelor's course still is rich people's architecture in, in, in our here, case here. Uh, more questions? Any more questions from the students? Arpit, you want to go? You are immersed. No, ma'am, I, I, I would like to add some, uh, sure. add, uh, add some points to your words only. So like... Uh, we are so, uh, our society is so vulnerable to monetary values. Uh, like then we very easily wind up with all these traditional and our local values. So how to overcome this phenomenon? You like had asked this. on this platform also. I remember. He had yes, asked ma'am. this question in the previous platform also. Giovanni, and, and uh, a, th- a hawk eyes um, p- perspective. It's always good to have a hawk eye perspective. What? No, explain the question again. It was. Uh, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So, like uh, uh, nowadays, we can observe that we are so diverted toward. Uh, we are so vulnerable towards the monetary values. Uh, so we very easily wind up with all the traditional uh, traditional aspects and uh, this local identity thing. So, how to overcome this thing? And like, this is the current scenario, sir. By thinking of what is the value. Value is not money. Value is not comfort. Value value is well-being, not well-having. So we have to restart from ourselves, not from the outside, not from the other. Try to look inside yourself and see if you're really looking of what is the real value of life. That is respect. Respect of life itself of the environment, on yourself. What are we? Are we our our body? No, the body is the matter. We're something else. We have to look to that kind of value. This is the value. When I was in Amdorad, I heard Dalai Lama. He came and he had a lecture in IIM. I went there with Doshi. And he spoke to all the managers saying, you have to make money. And don't ask me how. Because you will lose everything if I tell you. I don't know how. But make a lot of money. But remember, money is made of three parts. One is for yourself and for your family. The second one is for the workers of your company and for their families. The third part is not yours. You have to give it back. Because you have a chance in life that other people didn't have. So it's something, it's not the money, it's the value of sharing what you are and what you have. This is the real value. We have to go back. So 
you have to make money, you have to, but try to see if your needs are real or you're following as something that is coming from the outside. For example, I have a problem you can see on my back with books. I have too many books, but otherwise I don't have many needs. I need to, I like to cook. I do the bread on myself and it spends some time. But I like it. It's a way of living. And then I eat and I feel this bread becoming warm in my hands since I work it. It's life. Yes. This is, I like this. I like yes, life. Sir. And let's, this, with this, we're going back to the beginning. Living architecture is the lived, lived architecture. Otherwise, it's dead architecture. So I, we think, have to uh, I think uh, my, my Nirma students can relate with what you are saying now because I kept saying all this that you have to really feel everything. You have to live every moment. It's not about, you know, you just do the work and keep it aside and uh, put it uh, there. Uh, you know, it's that I have done. It's not life is not about tick marking doing things, you know. But uh, to answer a little bit more to what Arpit was saying, uh, the very notion of well-being has to be also inculcated in architecture education, which is still to arrive in our education here. Uh, because um, we are still in the one, first component of architecture, as you mentioned about the three points about the structure. We are still there in structure. We have to go to the community level and probably then we can go to the spirit level but it is really not a difficult task to do as uh, giovanni lives uh, some uh, i think 10000 kilometers from ahmedabad and i am here and i am almost living the same life spending nearly 3 to 4 hours every day doing things which i can call that i am living every day so uh, you have to live yourself first to be able to uh, actually convince somebody that this is the way of living and that's where, um, I mean, being both of us being disciples of Doshi, I think we, we, we do understand the value of living. And mind you, you will still make money. That's something which needs to be understood by the younger generation. Money is coming. It's not that you have to starve. We are not saying you have to starve out there. Money will come, but it's to define that. The are you able to live that? The key is to observe without any judgment, with detachment. That is, it's not detachment. Detachment is something that you cut so there is violence. It's not attached. That is something different. This is like yoga. This is like yoga. You have to observe. To be there in what you're doing. Your soul with all your person. Your soul. You have to be there. You I think spend here. some time. Spend some time with yourself is the is the is the best way. You will know what is right or wrong. And if even if you for some years you still tend to do a little bit more in the rush as an early career is fine. But somewhere point at, at your life's uh, very critical point, you really need to question: What am I doing? Yeah. Really, am I enjoying? Am I living every moment? If I make a big bungalow, if I get the best car and if I'm unable to use it and if I'm unable to live it, if I have to eat food uh, junk from somewhere else because I'm too busy and I have too much money that I can buy everything, I think you will have to really question yourself. If you have, uh, you know, all the things in life and you are still not having time to really enjoy it, what is the point of having them? And um, uh, let me tell you, many, many people who have a lot of material possession, they go through this problem that they do not have time to uh, live that. So it is better to have things which you can live with. They and don't relationships live. Are, relationships they are part of it. That's they not life. That's not, absolutely. And I think relationships are also part of that living. And I, I want to give a very simple example here. I just dropped a line to Ketan an hour ago that I'm going to have Giovanni your, um, for um, talking about Venice. And you see he's there. This is the relationship. You establish relationship with people. 
it is community and it is society which is going to actually make you feel you are living and you have to really be part of them it's not about that i am there you are there but you are only there when others are there with you and enjoying and you know and growing with you it's the moment you think about other i will grow no matter what others are doing there is already a problem you are already in the race i think this coming first in the class is already a problem in our indian education you know if from childhood we used to have this the first in the class my child is first in the class yeah. is the problem that we have That's richest right. in the country the richest in the country richest in the world and still they are not satisfied yes they want to have more so there is no end to that more you know i mean we go back to uh, mandela the king and gandhi and these people saying it uh, but we we, we you can the, taste in the, it in the greek culture they had aristocratics yes it comes from oi aristoi that means the best but that it was not coming from rich or from they were really the best so the politician were the best they could have so there were people following the philosopher and following the kalo kagatsia the ethic and come staying together not dividing the ethic from the life well that's something different this is so oi aristoi that that is from the beginning but that was a name to be better today is a name to be more than the other before then they are not better and full stop be better than the other so it's a race it's, it's all a competition it's all a commercial transaction where we have to to be more we have to change they have to choose they are too young to decide about about it uh let us take any other question if they have um uh, because i also have to ask your availability now um any other questions students you have you can always reach out to him if you want to i will give his contact with his due permission here on this platform uh so okay i don't see people raising hand or any questions from them so probably i can now uh, do the last word from my end or anybody wants to do the valedictory or i do the valedictory i'm good at that but i would love my students doing that there is a raising hand no no raising hand raise your hand and then not i mean okay hi ritu so we have our professor in charge of the course ritu rai i we don't hear you mute mute i'm so Unmute. glad uh, professor juni could be here and we could hear him such a wonderful talk thank you so much for coming and enlightening us uh, so this is ritu yes ritu from the university of rajasthan and yes mansi is the course in charge don't do not worry about that part of it uh, thank you it was a wonderful and I, actually your presentation took me back to my visit to uh my masters days and then going to venice and amsterdam my goodness too too good and uh, so much of insight so much of insight taking us back to and giving us uh, you know insight that probably uh visiting our own uh, self is the first or the foremost key we should be all looking at and yes uh, you are absolutely right vedanta talks about this and there are professors who are now uh, talking in depth about uh, being yourself first and then talking about your traditions your identity and then making it uh, forward uh, thank you professor jivani uh, thank you so much yes mansi you may continue if you okay. i honestly did not uh, check with the questions i think we are over the time but i could hear the entire presentation this is uh, so wonderful to be thank you mansi from uh, asking uh, professor to be here uh, delivering this lecture thank you so much thank you and we see thank you, you. thank you we see your uh, uh, doggy now uh, who also yeah. wants to take the credit of remaining silent through the course 
uh, so <laughs> very polite <laughs> so I, I i do want to do the um yeah, thank you thanksgiving to you uh, with i think a lot of keywords but i would like to take uh, two main keywords because both of us being uh, also um, um hardcore activist by uh, you know by soul i will say and that's where we could connect as well because we do believe that um, we have to be part of the social political communal move, community movements which are going around in the country to serve the architecture better so uh, uh, for me one of the key words for um, from your talk will be you know uh, embracing pluralism but at the same time uh, you know appreciating uh, the unity in that pluralism that we are one you know I, i there are many keywords which i have written and i would like to really discuss and even uh, write a short uh, essay from your one lecture one of many one, one of, of many. many that that we are one we we do have our own uh, identity and we do have our own life and living and that needs to be first identified to be able to appreciate ourselves unless and until we are able to appreciate ourselves we are actually unable to appreciate the entire community of which we are part of so a pluralism is important but at the same time you know uh, i you use the word genuineness i also here so um because we are also following each other on what's going on in the politics in both the countries so i will keep that aside um but i will stop here with uh, that one uh, word which i would like to take from uh, your lecture apart from the many um, uh, ideas which you have floated and you also kept aside the water part uh, knowing that i am also a water baby <laughs> so we will talk about the water sometime else but the beyonce of water um uh, is very important and that's also uh, an integral part of um, living architecture particularly what you presented in uh, the case of uh, venice because venice architecture cannot be understood and cannot be really comprehended or even told or even built without understanding the water which is sitting there and which is an equal partner to the architecture of venice uh, so with these words i would really like to um, thank you a lot for taking out time and um, i'm sorry that i have been after you for weeks and weeks to give me a date <laughs> so i'm really sorry about that <laughs> but i'm sure students have had more insights and they will present a better case study which they are doing so we are having 18 case studies from around the country which they are trying to um, you know present in their own language um, uh, to appreciate the traditional architecture and vernacular so i hope they get some uh, thing to write from here and if uh, they really bring out the vocabularies which you try to, to say today i think i will be the happiest teacher uh, on earth <laughs> because um, they it is important that they learn some good vocabularies because also for them to even think about those it's not only just learning the words but also getting in depth into those words you know so at yes, least good that they got the words yes please when you go around i'm talking to the students remember my teacher of history of architecture in venice that was manfredo da tafuri one of the bigger historian of architecture he used to say the goal of the research is to search is not to find yes. often Absolutely. we go around to find what we want <laughs> yes. we all want, already have something in mind and we go <laughs> around to find it don't do it don't do it be open mind yes look around you and see not only look see what is happening around you then you will find maybe something else maybe it doesn't matter what but the goal of the research is to search absolutely you helped me for my sunday workshop because i am conducting a workshop on research so i am going to start with this line <laughs> thank you so much with that note i thank all the students also to be here and thank you jeevani once again uh, have a wonderful um, life there and also take care from covid and also my two lovely uh, ex students from amdavad uh, who came here to hear you uh, take care there um, um, pandemic is really um, now getting difficult for all over the world 
so do take care and when you come to ne um, ahmedabad next time i'm really seeing you here okay absolutely okay and this bye is bye. an open invitation from jaipur uh, professor jeevani whenever yes. you are coming back to uh, probably all all such things which you talked about uh, we here in jaipur can live and <laughs> relish it so i would um, whenever you are here in india it's an open invitation so we, uh, we thank you we are uh, blessed to be here thank you thank you thank you bye bye and thank you so much bye bye thank you bye thank you bye thank you ma'am thank, thank you, you sir thank you ma'am thank you bro